What would you like people to know about you? Uh, I'm a fun guy. Uh, obviously, I love the game of basketball. I just can't give you a whole spiel. <laughs> I don't even know where you're sitting at. <laughs> <laughs> Who did it better? <laughs> Who did it better? That's outstanding right there. Wow. Hey, listen, that's at least you know my laugh right in the background that you're hearing. His laugh, what was that? I'm still trying to figure out what your laugh is, but his laugh, man, that, that laugh was scary. Uh, it's, Kawhi had that uneasy laugh. You know, that's like the laugh when you laugh at your, your boss's uh, joke at work, but it wasn't really funny, so you just throw it on out there. He, like, took, he took laugh lessons this summer, and that was the best he could do. <laughs> right there. 30-minute show dedicated to one topic and one topic only. It is the Toronto Raptors. We've got 10 points on the season ahead for the Raptors. Brendan Haywood, David Griffin, I'm Jared Greenberg. Number one, coming off of a franchise record, 59 wins. It seems like everything changed, right? A summer of change. Look at what the Raptors did. And now a LeBron-less Eastern Conference. How much pressure, Griff, is on the Raptors to not just get back to where they've been, but to get to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history? You know, it's funny. I don't know if they look at it as pressure as much as they look at it as opportunity. You know, this is a team that won 59 games last year and could be defensive stifling before Kawhi got there. But they gave up 112 and a half points, or rather their defensive rating was 112.5 in the playoffs. They didn't stop anybody. So now you add the defensive versatility of Kawhi. If he's healthy, you add a guy who is a first team all NBA performer on both sides of the court. This is a golden opportunity for this team and it's why Masai and Bobby Webster had to go for it. I think there actually is a lot of pressure on these Toronto Raptors from the coaching staff to the front office to the players because it's about the recruitment of Kawhi. And if this team is winning, and if this team has a chance, and, it, and they make a deep run in the Eastern Conference, so if they make it to the NBA Finals, Kawhi, maybe he might want to stay in the six. Maybe he might want to hang with Drake for another season or two. But if they don't make it, or if it doesn't go the way they, they think it will, we could be looking at a complete and total rebuild, and they will look at this deal and say, hey, we traded away our greatest player in Raptor history, DeMar DeRozan, and a year later, we don't have anything. So I think there's a lot of pressure. I think everybody in the franchise feels it because if they don't get this thing done, we could be looking at a rebuilding Raptors in 2019. Did you just come around and finally get on board with my point I've been making for months that DeRozan is the greatest Raptor in franchise history? Please stop bringing up points from our radio show. <laughs> that Sh just happened? Shameless plug. That just happened. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. The Kawhi Leonard dilemma, as Brendan just referenced, the risk versus the reward. Can the Raptors turn this one-year recruiting pitch into a long-term relationship, kind of like you and I have? Oh, Steve boy. Smith talked with Kawhi, among others, at Raptors Media Day. The question is going to be all year. Is this Kawhi Leonard staying in Toronto? How are you going to handle those questions? And I, I would say, you know, the other things other than basketball is going to be asked. Um, is he happy? Is he staying long-term? So tell me how you're going to um, be able to handle that. And, and do you have some of those answers right now? Well, that's not for me to talk about. You know, that's for you guys to uh, uh, mention on TV. But for me, myself, my family, we are all focused on uh, being in Toronto and, and this season. And I can't look past that or, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to play well. So um, I'm focused on this team and getting us to where we got to go. I think the more and more we show how good we can be, the more and more we win, the more and more the city shows him how great it is. The city is already great, but the fans, uh, he's going to love it. And I think we get to the stage that where he knows we were in San Antonio, we get back to and show how elite this organization can be. I think it'll be a long term deal for him, too, if he, you know, if he can buy in, if we can get him there, if we can get everybody there, everybody buying the fans, the city, the team. Um, if we do what we're capable of doing, I think, you know, he'll want to be here uh, not as long as he can, you know, as long as he can win, as long as they can continue to show him they can win, he'll be here. The risk reward is twofold. One, winning with success on the court. Two, is in, maybe independent of that, is keeping Kawhi. Are you on board with that? Yeah, so I, I think it's a risk, but I don't look at it as a, a huge downside. If you go for it and you try to capitalize in the window you have and you try to win, which they were not able to do, they couldn't get past Mount Lebronto. So if you're them, you had to take a chance. And the downside is you've already offloaded DeMar DeRozan's contract. Right. If your nucleus can't win a, con uh, win a championship, you don't want to be paying DeMar that money anyway. So in a weird way, they've sort of hid the dump if it doesn't work out. 
Let's move on to what we could expect from Kawhi Leonard on the court this season. H how does he fit with what they're trying to do? What, what do you expect to see out of him? And, and let's also throw this in there. The quad injury, limited into nine games. He says he's 100% this year, Brendan. But his first day of practice on Tuesday with the Raptors was his first five-on-five five since January. So what can you expect from him on the court? Well, I'm assuming he's 100%. I'm going to take his word that he's healthy and he's ready to go. And if he's ready to go, he is the best two-way player we have in the NBA right now. He's very unique in the fact that he can go out there and get you 24, 25 points per game, and he can guard the other team's best player. A lot of guys don't want to do that anymore. It takes away from their offense. Kawhi can be that piece for, for you. And more importantly, he's a low-maintenance superstar. He's a guy that comes in there, does his business, but he doesn't have this, this big aura around him or that he walks into the gym and everybody has to cater to him. He doesn't really even want the spotlight like that. He wants to go out there, score his points, do the dirty work, and a lot of superstars don't want to do that. I think the sky's the limit for this team and what they can do. Well, if they're following the model of Paul George in Oklahoma City, Paul George went to Fresno State. Kawhi Leonard went to San Diego State. Kawhi Leonard played for San Antonio. He doesn't need glitz and glamour. He needs to know what his role is, and he needs to identify with a culture. And when you can be about what Kawhi's about, I, I think you should feel really good about your opportunity to keep him in Toronto. So focusing on him, the player, if you look at what they were not able to do come playoff time, they weren't able to get stops against the best wing in the NBA. And Kawhi's presence now gives them so much versatility defensively with Nick Nurse running the offense, they're going to run almost all of the actions that were generating incredible numbers with that second unit. Offense will take care of itself, but the versatility Kawhi brings to their defense is why I'm so high on their upside. Listen, you, around the Eastern Conference, with, even without LeBron, you've got Kyrie, you've got Giannis, you've got Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, but Kawhi has the potential to be the best player in the conference. Yeah, he has the potential because he checks all the boxes. You know, you have Kyrie. He's a dynamic offensive player, but he isn't the defensive player that Kawhi is. And so when you look at everybody else, there's one thing that they don't do quite well. And so I think with Kawhi, he does both things very well. He's an elite defensive wing might be the best defensive wing that we have and then at the same time he can score the ball his offense has grown so much from his time in San Antonio it's hard to believe he came into the league as a guy that couldn't shoot and now he's able to get his shot off in the mid-range you can run plays for him and he can be 24 25 points per game he can give you that every single night and it's and still uh, basically extend on defense and go out there and guard the tough guys my I think the best playoff moment I can think of for Kawhi was in the Oklahoma series this is when I knew that he was truly elite. He was guarding Russell Westbrook to start the game off, and then when he went and sat down, he went and guarded Kevin Durant. Not a lot of guys in the league that can do that. Uh, let's move on to point number three and talk about the coaching change that was made. You won a championship with Dwayne Casey in Dallas. What, what, what are the Raptors going to miss by not having that veteran presence, a coach of the year, on their bench anymore? Well, I think they're going to miss a lot defensively. Dwayne Casey, uh, I had the privilege of playing for him in 2011 on that Dallas Mavericks team that won a championship. And a lot of the things that we did defensively were orchestrated by Dwayne Casey, whether it was the zone principles that we used to hide Dirk Nowitzki, whether it was the scheme that we used in 2011 to frustrate and confuse LeBron James. That scheme no longer works anymore. But in 2011, <laughs> right. Dwayne Casey came up with that scheme, and that helped us a lot. So defensively, you're looking at a guy that can look at a team, take certain things away, put guys in the proper place, and really help you from a defensive standpoint. I think they're going to miss that. They do have great defensive players. Yeah. But you need somebody to put guys in the right position. I think they'll miss that this year. Yeah, I think they have a chance to be the best defensive team in basketball, at least right up there with some of the personnel they have. But Nick Nurse, speaking offensively, what does he bring to the table that's going to be a dune dynamic for this roster? Well, I think a lot was made last year about them changing their offense and playing to some of their strengths a little bit more. And you saw an incredibly potent offense, third in the league last year in offensive rating. That was Nick's baby to a huge degree. And where you really saw it take hold was in the dominance of their second unit. That, that group would absolutely dominate the second and, and oftentimes parts of the fourth quarters of games. And they were putting games away so they were able to rest guys longer. That's in large part because of Nick's work as an offensive mind. And so I think you're going to see them integrate uh, Kawhi very seamlessly into what they do. And I think Greg Monroe is another person that's a really good fit for the way Nick likes to play, which is moving bodies and ball and getting the most efficient shot. The Cavaliers complete the sweep. Disappointment for Toronto. Dwayne Casey out as coach of the Toronto Raptors.
In back-to-back -back days, he gets coach of the year and then officially a firing. A huge Kawhi Leonard trade as the claw is on the way to Toronto. The Spurs traded the disgruntled All-Star for All-Star DeMar DeRozan. It's on to another chapter with the Raptors and we're excited to welcome uh, Kawhi Leonard. Jazz Masai Ujiri is jumping up and down with joy to get a top five player into what might be already the NBA's deepest roster. Last year, Dwayne Casey used every bit of every player that he had throughout the course of the season. And interchangeable parts here, you look at guys who are very versatile, here's the projected depth chart. You gotta think it's gonna change throughout the course of the season. But let's bring back in Griff here and Brendan Haywood and, and look at a second unit that was already, most would argue, the most effective and best in basketball last year. Maybe if you move a guy like OG Ananobi to the bench this year, makes it even stronger. Well, I'm not sure if OG is going to move to the bench or if he's going to be starting. I think he's an integral part of this team, and you need to get him out there from the jump because he's such a great athlete. Let's not forget, this guy would have been a lot of – this guy would have been probably a top 10, maybe top 12 pick if not for ACL injury. He is a dynamic talent. He got better as the season went along. Surprisingly shot 37% from three. That was a question mark in his game. Only six points on the year, but I look at him as a guy that's taking his next step up, a guy that's going to develop. I think OG's going to be incredible this year. I think they're going to need him to be incredible. He's going to meet, need to be that 3D guy for them. He doesn't need to be the man. You have Kyle Lowry. You have, uh, you have Kawhi Leonard. But they need that next guy that can get double figures, but at the same time, you can depend on him to defend multiple positions and lock guys down. I think that's what they have in OG. I'm looking for a big year for him. I'm looking for about 12 to 13 points per game. Take that three-point percentage up just slightly, get it close to 40%, and I like to see a lot of versatility from him as well. Yeah, I think those numbers we were showing are a bit misleading for how impactful he was. Yeah. Started 62 games, did shoot 37%, and was their go-to perimeter defender. Fred Van Fleet got votes for sixth man of the year last year. He was a finalist. What, what, what does he mean to this team? What could he do as they re-sign him to come back this season? Well, to the point you're making about their versatility at their wing position and the length and athleticism, athleticism that they have there now, Fred Van Vliet was a huge part of their closing lineups last year as well. And the reason was they were able to initiate offense to a huge degree with Fred starting the pick and roll on one side, ball would go swing, swing. And now when DeMar or Kyle would go into their pick and roll, you had a defense that was in recovery and scramble mode. It was very, very important. What Fred offers them is a guy who's just a winner. Yeah. He's clutch. He's all about the right things. He's a little bit like a Della Vadova, but a, a more athletic version. He just, he operates and, f and sort of vibrates at that winning frequency all the time. So if all this wing depth were to keep him off the floor, I think that would be incredibly detrimental for the team. And keep this in mind, for a team that's got an all-star backcourt last year with DeRozan and Lowry, nobody played more minutes in the fourth quarter on that team than Van Fleet. And, and nobody, only one other player, made more shots in the fourth quarter than Van Fleet. And they struggled in his absence in the playoffs. Huge well. part of it, yeah. So th those are some perimeter guys coming off the bench, but there is a, a huge collection of versatile bigs that Nick Nurse is going to have a, a lot to play around with. How is he going to use them this year? Well, and I, I think one of the things that you're going to see them do, and we, sit, we talked about this a little bit off, offset as well, but Nick Nurse really likes to run pinch post action. Right. He likes to run things up at the elbows. He likes to let his bigs be playmakers and passers. And we can see what some of that looked like last year from their offense. Their second unit largely was who you're going to see in these clips, DeLon Wright, second unit. Jacob, Jacob Pertle, second unit. Siakam, second unit. So this second unit was running a lot of the movement offense that Nick believes in. Nick was our head coach of the Iowa Energy in the D League when I was with Phoenix. So he was somebody that we saw a great deal of and we saw the way he liked to operate with bigs that could initiate offense. So Greg Monroe, by way of example, is a phenomenal fit for Nick as a coach and a phenomenal fit for the rest of that roster. Because if you play all that wing defense, it doesn't really matter that that's not Greg's strong suit. Exactly. But what he does well, and you can demonstrate some of Greg at the elbow, maybe Greg at the high post for us. But if you initiate the, the offense this way, feeding Greg, and we cut and move off of Greg, we can now do some things like dribble handoff, where we're coming off now in movement. He can make another pass from here. Let's say Jared Greenberg being the shooter in the corner. Yeah, come on. 
with a paper but in my all hand. All of this <laughs> is going to be predicated on generating offense with your bigs being the passers. And Brendan, you like to run some other action out of this as well if you've got Greg Monroe. Well, listen, if you have a guy like Greg Monroe, first of all, if he catches the ball at the elbow, he's live right here because he can get right to his move, get right down the lane, finish with his left. But at the same time, we talked about the dribble handoff. You can also throw it back, sit a quick pin down, let a guard come off, and then rip it right back into the post. And then at the same time, we did talk about the dribble handoffs. You can dribble, you can go big, you can do a big, big screen and roll as well. There are multiple things you can do. You also have slice action. And what I mean by slice action is uh, you can throw the ball to the elbow, a cross screen right there for a guard coming off, where sometimes you can find it. Actually, it's called flex action, where you can get a quick layup right there. And if you don't get the layup, it's a continued dribble handoff. There are lots of things you can do from the pinch post when you have a versatile big like Greg Monroe because he can do everything. He can score it for you, he can pass, and he has the vision, and he can hit that little 15-foot shot and hit free throw. So there's a lot of different things they can do, and it's very hard to guard when you put your bigs at the elbow and they're live and they can do multiple things. And again, fit is so important. Greg Monroe is not somebody who is identified by his defense. Right. But they have so many guys that have that length and athleticism there. Imagine playing a lineup that has Kawhi and Siakam in it Ooh, together that's a lot with of somebody like Greg Monroe. Yeah. It's a lot of movement that they can generate, and it's a lot of transition that they'll get into as well. Loaded question. Real quick, though. I'd be stunned if Masai Ujiri and Bobby Webster don't make another move at some point this season, especially if they're looking for one more piece to make a championship run. Well, it's funny. Their depth is so good, I don't know exactly what they're going to be looking for. Right. I think they make a move, but only if it's somebody who is appreciably better than what they have. And maybe you could see them do something similar to what Philadelphia did last year at the buyout deadline, yeah. where they get some veteran shooting mm -hmm. and guys that they know they can count on come playoff time. Yeah, I think that right now they have so many young guys, guys like OG, guys like Siakam, uh, Van Vliet. Uh, we have Wright also. They have so many young guys that, they, that are trying to figure it out and are trying to grow. I'm sure they're going to give those guys a chance first. Now, maybe they might go out for another piece, but more than likely I think they let those young guys grow with what they have with Kawhi. And don't forget, a healthy Danny Green's a totally different player than we saw last year, too. So Danny's going to be a really significant oh, yes. piece for those guys. Danny's great, got a lot in the tank. He wasn't healthy last year. One of the greatest shooters in NBA playoff history. Coming off his fourth consecutive All-Star selection, Kyle Lowry enters this season without his BFF, DeMar DeRozan. A report from Josh Lewenberg of TSN says Lowry was so unhappy with the team trading away DeRozan, Lowry dodged calls this summer from Masai Ujiri and Nick Nurse. How will all this play out this season? We get more as we play a little game of true or false with the starters. Trey Kirby and Tas Mellis here of the starters for your next point on the Toronto Raptors. We're going to play a little true or false. True or false, Trey? Kawhi Leonard will return to form. This is the question surrounding the Toronto Raptors. <laughs> oh, it's got to be true. I saw over the summer that Kawhi Leonard was working out with Kobe Bryant and LeBron James and Kevin Durant. You don't put yourself through those kind of paces if your leg is not working. You think Kobe's going to baby a guy because his leg hurts a little bit? I don't think so. So from an injury standpoint, I'm just assuming that Kawhi is ready to go. As for what he's going to be like playing out of the Spurs system, who really knows? He had one season where he was really the ball dominant guy and the system was built around him. He had other seasons with the Spurs where he was more of a system player. We don't know what he's going to be away from San Antonio. And that's without factoring in the fact that the Raptors have a new coach this year as well. It's going to be probably a strange start at the beginning of the year as everybody figures out their places and who plays with what and sure. all the continuity and the chemistry and blah, 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 blah. There's a lot of questions to be answered, but Kawhi Leonard is a supreme talent. Right. All that roster stuff aside, Kawhi Leonard is one of the best in the NBA, and he just likes basketball too much not to be good at it anymore. <laughs> I think, you know, besides the injury, obviously, if he's injured, it's not going to work out for Kawhi Leonard. But this guy is a basketball robot. He is so good at it. I, I don't see him sacrificing his love for the game at, at any point. Uh, throughout you know these next couple of years whether it's with the Raptors or elsewhere I think he's already sacrificed money you know with the, with the San Antonio Spurs not getting that five-year contract I think we're gonna see a great Kawhi Leonard he likes what Nick Nurse is selling him in terms of the versatility that Kawhi's gonna bring to this lineup yeah we might have some rough spots to start the season but 
I think we could have an MVP Kawhi because he's going to surprise people, and that's what MVP voters like. They like somebody that surprises them. <laughs> oh, yeah. If he's back to form, it's between him and Giannis and perhaps Joel Embiid as the best player in the Eastern Conference, and it'd be great to get another great player in the East, especially since LeBron took off. All right, that is it for us. More on the Toronto Raptors coming up. And if you want more of the starters, check us out weeknights here on NBA TV throughout the season. They've been the beast of the East. Raptors point number nine over the last six years. They've totaled up the most wins of any Eastern Conference team, coming off a franchise record 59 wins. Now, maybe what people are focusing on is how they've lost in the playoffs last three straight years. LeBron has eliminated the Raptors. Can't do that this year unless, of course, the Raptors and Lakers make the NBA Finals. 54 and a half, Griff. More or less this year for Toronto. I'm going to take more, but just barely more. I think they'll be less than the 59 they won last year. I'm going to take more as well. I think uh, you, they obviously won 59 last year. I think this team is better with the additions of Kawhi and Danny Green. So I see that win total going up slightly. How far do they go in the playoffs? Well, that's what it's really about. So number one in regular season wins the right. last six seasons. This is about a finals appearance. And so I think that's what's going to mark success. I got them going to the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs>